Hello, today's video will be about various scales of calipers, precision instrument devices that can be used to measure dimensions of an object. There are various types of such vernier scales on the market. Some of them have only basic functionality, as can be seen over here. Others are more advanced. For instance, such vernier scales may have the ability of showing a digital reading of the value you are currently measuring, making them much easier to use and much more modern. However, all the vernier scales also have their advantages, such as not requiring a battery. So let's see how you can use such an older vernier scale. First of all, you have to think about what kind of measurement you will take and if the scale of the vernier is going to be helpful to you. Keep in mind that some vernier scales, as can be seen over here, can use only the metric scale and others may only be for imperial measurements. Well, there are a few that have both scales and can be used for measurements either in inches or in centimeters or millimeters. However, even every time you're going to use such a device, you have to think about what kind of measurement you're going to take. And you can take the dimension for the internal part of an object, and in this case, you're going to use the upper part. The external dimension, and in this case, you're going to use the lower side. And you can also measure the depth, thinking that the tip is placed inside the object and the edge is going to, place, to be placed at the external side of the object, tightly fitting to it. So, let's see how you can make such a measurement. Let's say you want to measure the external dimension of this object, which is actually an aluminium profile that has been cut to a certain size. So, in order to make the measurement, you have to look closely at the scale and notice where some divisions are aligned. In this case, we are measuring 2.5 centimeters and around 6 millimeters. So the reading would be, and I will write it on the paper to be more clear, So if it's not perfectly visible, 2.56 centimeters. Okay, so 2.56. As you have noticed, it took me at least a couple of seconds to make the measurements because first I want to look and see where the larger scale is placed. And then I want to find the division that is perfectly aligned with the main scale on the lower one. And this means that it's a 6. Sometimes you have to look quite closely and at others you may not find the reading precisely. You have to look and see where it is farther from the correct alignment and then you have to center your vision towards the point where it's actually perfectly aligned. But you're going to notice these mismatches. Okay, to make another measurement, we are going to have the inside of an object. Okay, and tightly aligning it means that we see 2.5 three and then I'm noticing a good alignment unfortunately even though I'm expecting it to be over here it's not I'm seeing it that it could be in this position or in this position but if I'm looking closer I'm noticing that both zero divisions are perfectly aligned so two point 40 centimeters. Okay, let's make another measurement.
we have to place it as tightly as possible, but without being over tight. Also note that there is a way to adjust how tightly the sliding part of the caliper is going to move. If it's too tight, it's not going to move at all. If it's too weak, it may slide and have a certain wobble or misalignment. So it's good to find a balance in the way in which it moves. All right, so right now let's see. 0 0.1 centimeter. Let's see how many millimeters. In this case, it's quite difficult to tell if it's 3 and 3.4 divisions or if it's readily a 4. I think it's safe to say that probably you can take whatever value you may consider because it's not clear if one division or the other is closer to the value you're seeing. Probably it's somewhere in between. I will take probably 4. So 0 0.14 centimeters. And this was blast reading. As you can notice right away, measurement is quite slow. And this is unfortunately one of the shortcomings of using such an older model of Bernier scale. And unfortunately, you cannot have too many chances of making fast measurements, particularly with objects that may, may not be perfectly aligned or ones that are actually showing in between values even on this scale. There are vernier scales that have better accuracy and they may make it slightly easier to make some measurements, but in general this is the kind of shortcomings you are going to see. And as mentioned before, let's also make a depth measurement and in this case I will try to place this piece of metal as closely as possible to the base, but notice that it doesn't have a level A, so the measurement is not going to be highly accurate. Probably it's better to place it like this and let's see what kind of measurement we will end up with. As you can see, this is the angle we have used. We try to use as straight of an angle as possible, but this is not going to be entirely possible. And let's see what kind of measurement we are going to read. So it's one centimeter one centimeter three millimeters so zero point one. And I'm seeing the division at 1. So this is the measurement we have taken. So 1 centimeter, 3 millimeters, and roughly this is the value we are seeing over here. So as you notice, it's not a high precision measurement, unfortunately, but you can find out roughly where you are at. After you have seen all these measurements, I think you have quite a good understanding of what are the possibilities of classic or analog vernier scales or vernier clippers. And as you noticed, it's quite clear that they are not as easy to use as digital ones, because with digital ones you have an immediate reading and you don't have to fiddle and try to see where some alignments are made on the scale. And there may be the additional advantage of not having to bother with so many details when you're making measurements. 
and even some vernier scales have the ability to quickly switch if they have a digital reading from millimeters to centimeters, which is very useful. On the other side, these older type of products can be used successfully, but you have to keep in mind that they take much more time when making measurements and measurement may be less precise. Also, it's quite difficult to make relative measurements, which would mean that you make a measurement using a specific dimension and then you want to see how far your other measurement is from the initial one. So, for instance, you want to compare various dimensions for the same type of ob object. And in this case, you would make a measurement, you would zero in your caliper if it's a digital one, and then you would make the measurement for another object you want to, um, to check. And in this case, digital calipers are entirely on a wholly different rig than the classical ones. However, as mentioned, without requiring any batteries and being so sturdily built, classical vernier scales or vernier calipers are still quite useful, particularly if you know what you are doing and if you don't require necessarily the highest efficiency. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.